and thank you for joining us. My name is Heidi and today we're going to learn about forces and energy. So let's get your thinking caps on and let's get started. Today we're actually going to be doing two experiments, but both experiments use something known as the persistence of vision. So the persistence of vision is an optical illusion where things appear to be moving or an image appears when it actually isn't there. So for example, if you look over here at this uh, grid of black squares, it looks like in the white circle of each corner of the black square, there's a little black dot that's flashing on and off. But the moment you move your eye towards it, it disappears and just shows the white circle. So this image actually doesn't have any black dots on it. Those circles are just completely white. But the black dot appears because as we're moving our eye around, our eye is mistaking part of the black from the squares and putting it inside the circles, which creates this image appearance that actually isn't there. We actually also use the persistence of vision in a lot of animation. So a lot of old films and a lot of old cartoons are actually a series of pictures that people ran through a reel really quickly making it look like it was a const it was constantly in motion. A more current use of them is in stop motion film. So stop motion film works by taking pictures of a series of images and then going through the images very very quickly. So here's a brief example of it where this rainbow just kind of goes across your screen. We're going to be using this phenomenon today to create our hand spinner, which is very similar to a really old toy from the 1800s known as a thaumatrope. So here are some of the materials that you will need for today's experiment. You'll need a sheet of printer paper, preferably in white. If you can't get white, you can use a very light color. You'll want a pencil and eraser, and preferably you'll want a sharpened pencil. You'll also need a pair of scissors some pencil crayons, and then you will want to use either tape or a stapler to create your hand spinner. So the first thing we're going to do is make the top of our hand spinner. To do that, you can take a regular sheet of printer paper and fold it in half using the hamburger fold. So you're folding it horizontally instead of vertically. So my favorite, the way I like to do it to get nice, um, even sides is I make sure the corners match up on both the top and the bottom and then I squash it down flat in the middle and crease it with my nail. When you do that you'll see that you have a really nice crease that you can use your scissors to cut against. I have a few pre-prepped so I'm going to just go on and show you that you should have two halves that are the same size and you're going to take one half and you're going to fold it in half again and then you'll have two pieces of paper that are this size. You're going to take one half, you're going to match up your corners, and you're going to fold it again. Make sure you crease, and you're going to cut it. And then you should have two pieces of paper that are this size. And this is the size that we're going to be using for our hand spinners. So to start with the top of our hand spinner, and this is where if you printed off the worksheet, you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to fold it in half, or in the case of the printed sheet, fold along the dotted line. So you're going to fold it in half, you're going to crease the paper here, and then you're going to open it up, and this is going to be the outside of your spinner. So I've zoomed in for you so that you can see what we're going to draw, but we're going to draw a fish and a fishbowl on the two separate sides of this paper. So this is where you're going to need your pencil. So to draw your fishbowl, you're going to start with a rounded side here and draw almost like a squashed circle until you get about to be the same height and then you want to draw half of an oval on top. You can then draw a squashed oval on the inside and that is our fishbowl. So I like to draw some decorations for my fishbowl, so I'm going to add some rocks and then I'm going to draw a nice plant and you can do a few extra ones. On this side now, I'm going to draw a fish in this section of the paper. So it's kind of on the opposite side of my plant. So I'm going to draw kind of like an egg shape. Then I'm going to draw the fins, which are just two little circles. I'm going to draw a triangle on top for the top fin. 
and then two little fins underneath for my fish. You can also write your name in this space up here, but that is optional. So feel free to pause the video right now, and then you can take your pencil crayons and you can color in your little drawing. So we're going to be now assembling our spinner once we have our finished object. We're going to basically stick this paper on the top of a pencil using some tape. So I like to actually tape the top first, so I'll fold it in half, and then I will put tape along here, and I'll fold it down onto the other side. So now you'll notice that you have like a bit of a pocket going on. I'm going to now tape this side together, and now we have a completely closed off pocket. You can now stick your pencil in here and use a piece of tape to adhere the paper to your pencil. And so I've done the fishbowl side, I'm going to flip it over and do it on my fish side as well. And that's my completed spinner that's ready to spin now. I'm also going to show you how to do it with a stapler. So here is another completed top and I have a pencil here. So with the stapler it's a little bit easier. So what you're going to do is you're going to fold it around your pencil and we're now going to staple around the pencil. So you're going to staple up to about the pencil. You want to make sure your pencil isn't caught, it can still move, and then staple down. You're going to do the same thing on the other side, this side now, I've just flipped it around. You want it to be pretty close to the pencil. The last staple we're going to do is at the top, and we're going to staple above the pencil. And there, we have another completed spinner using stapler. Now that we've created our spinners, we're going to spin them so we can merge our two pictures into one. So the way that we spin it is by sticking it inside the two palms of our hands and we move our hands in opposite directions. So we can move our right hand forward and our left hand back and that causes the spinner to spin. And if you spin it, you'll get it fast enough and you should see something happen. I think you can see this video, but you should be able to see that the fish is actually going in the fishbowl. You might want to practice this a little bit, try it in different lights, because you need a pretty good light in order to see this phenomenon. But speaking of light, what is it actually? Can we touch light? How would you describe light to someone who'd never seen it before? Take a moment and pause this video and jot down a few ideas. So light is actually a type of energy. And we use energy to do things. So for example, we would use energy to eat, we use it to move, but what do we actually use light for? We don't exactly use it for eating, and we definitely don't use it for movement. So light is actually an energy that we use to see. So light comes from sources like the sun or light bulbs or flashlights, and light travels from these light objects in what we call light rays. These light rays hit objects such as this tree, and the light rays actually bounce off the tree into our eye, allowing us to see. If we didn't have the sun, if we didn't have any lights, we wouldn't actually be able to see, which is why it's so much more difficult to see during the dark. So we call these types of light white light. So any light that you see from a lamp, any light from the sun is white light. But this is because when you look at it, it actually appears to be white. But when you take light and you split it up, you'll see it's actually composed of different colors. It's composed of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet light. Hopefully these sound kind of familiar, but you actually also see all these lights in the rainbow. So today in our rainbow spinner experiment, we're actually going to prove that rainbow light is, can be found inside white light. And we're going to do this by creating what is known as a Newton disk. So here are some of the materials that you'll need for today's experiment. You'll need a sheet of paper, a piece of cardboard, a pair of scissors, a ruler, or some sort of straight edge, a mug or a cup, and you want to make sure that your piece of paper and your cardboard are big enough for you to trace your mug on. You'll want a pencil that's sharpened and an eraser, some pencil crayons, preferably rainbow colored pencil crayons, some school glue, or some tape. To make a rainbow spinner, you're going to need a sheet of paper, 
and your cardboard to start off with as well as your cup or in my case a mug. You're going to trace your mug onto the sheet of paper and you also want to trace it onto your cardboard paper as well. Now, if you have the template, you can also just cut out your template. You'll have to trace the round template that you printed off onto a sheet of cardboard. And um, a tip for cutting things out of cardboard. So if you find that you have a lot of extra space, it can be kind of hard to cut a nice round circle out. So I like to cut off any extra cardboard that I can. So I find that just helps me when I'm cutting. So this cardboard that you're cutting out right now, um, you want it to be a thicker piece of cardboard. So you can't really use a cereal box because it will cause your spinner to bend. So make sure you use something that's a bit thicker. So now that we have our, um, our circle cut out, we actually now want to divide it into six sections. It's okay, if you look, you can see mine isn't exactly perfect but it's divided into six fairly even pieces. You then want to take your pencil crayons and you want to color in each section of color of the rainbow. So you want to color this one red, orange, yellow, and this one might be a bit hard to see, green, blue, and this last section you want to color violet or purple. So you can pause your video, you can start coloring that in. I actually already have one that's already colored in, so I'm going to show you now how to thread your string through your cardboard. Once you have this colored, you're gonna to wanna to glue it to your cardboard. If you don't have glue, you can also use um, some tape. So if you are taping it, and mine's not finished coloring, you have to color yours first, you want to um, roll in the sides like that and you want to apply four pieces so you want to apply on the top the bottom like that and then you also want to do the two sides you really want to avoid putting any tape in the middle because that's where we're actually going to put our string through and if you have tape there it'll be very very difficult to get your thread through so once you've taped put tape on the sides you can squish it down on your cardboard and it should stay there quite well if you notice that a few sides are kind of bending up, you can take some tape and just tape it down. But I have a finished one here that I've already colored and I've already gotten all dry. So what we're going to do now is you're going to take your pencil and you should have a fairly sharp tip on there. And you're going to poke two holes, one hole underneath red, so right there, and one hole underneath yellow. So I don't know if you can see, but right there, and there, you want them to be about one finger apart. So you take your pencil, poke it through, and then poke it through on this side too. I then like to lift it up and poke through again and just make that hole a bit bigger. So I like to move my pencil around in a circle and it's easier to get your string through. Now, if you look at the back, you should see kind of two spots where the pencil wants to go through but can't because of the table. You want to actually poke through that on the opposite side using your pencil again. And so now you actually have two holes that you can see through. So I just like to take my pencil, make that hole a bit bigger, so it's a bit easier to thread through. Now I have my spinner that has two holes in it. You then take your string, and this is kind of the tricky part because I don't have string, so I'm using a piece of yarn. So I'm going to show you how to thread a pretty thick, kind of fuzzy piece of yarn or string through a small hole that you can see right here. So I like to line up my string, so I, my string is on top of the hole where I wanted to go through, and then I use my pencil and I just kind of poke it through bit by bit until I see it coming out on this side, and then I can easily grab it and pull it through. We're going to thread that side that we just pulled through the cardboard the side back into the opposite side so it's kind of looped on. It might take a bit of practice, but as long as you just keep poking the string and you keep adding more in it'll poke through just like that so you want to have like a loop of string on um, the cardboard side like that so i'm going to keep pulling the string until the two ends meet like this and you can tie a knot 
So I like to gather the two strands together, make a circle like that, and then take this end and poke it through and just tie it shut. And there you have your completed rainbow spinner that's ready to spin. So now that we have our completed rainbow spinner, you want to make sure your rainbow spinner is kind of in the middle. You see one side is rainbow and one side is cardboard. You want to make sure the strings are not tangled and you want to hold each side with one finger. You then want to take this and you want to spin it almost like you're skipping rope. So I recommend spinning it a few times. Once you spin it about, I'd say 10 or 15 times, you pull your fingers out and then you bring them in, pull them out again, and you'll see that it starts to spin. The more you tug on it, the faster it'll spin. And if you look, you should see something happen. The color should actually blur together to make white. And that just demonstrates how uh, white light is actually made out of rainbow colors. Thank you so much for joining today. And I hope you had fun and learned something about forces and light. For your rainbow wheel, I recommend try different color combinations and see what color you get. So for example, Maybe try doing the rainbow, but have them in different spots. Like maybe have red where green normally is and see if that actually makes a difference. You can even try drawing different patterns. So for example, I drew a spiral on this one and see what image you get. And then you can even try like maybe just using primary colors. Ask your parents or guardians if they can take a picture of your work and tweet it at Let's Talk Science with hashtag STEM at home. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!